On May 16, 2013, the first day of Google I.O., Hugo Barra of Google kind of surprised the world. He pulled a Samsung Galaxy S4 out of his pocket on a stage where you'd only expect to hear him even mention a Google Nexus device. And not only did he hold one up and talk about it, but he revealed that the one he was holding was a special one. It wasn't running the typical Samsung's TouchWiz skin on top of Android with all its gaudy animations and colors and features. His Galaxy S4 was running a Google version of Android. It had a Nexus experience, as he put it. And Google's clean lines and blue hollow accents and everything, this Galaxy S4 was really special. He called it the Google Play Edition. But not only was he holding a Google Play Edition Galaxy S4, and not only was it a project that came together in the last week, but he also announced that it would go on sale later that month in the Google Play Store. And it did and an HTC One Google Play Edition appeared alongside it. But then there was nothing. There was silence, month after month of silence about the whole Google Play Edition thing. Uh, until last week, where we got two new Google Play Edition phones, so we now have actually a tablet in there, the LG G-Pad 8.3 Google Play Edition, and the Sony Xperia Z Ultra Google Play Edition. So that's two new OEMs and two new screen sizes. We have LG on board now, and we have Sony on board now, and we have an 8.3 inch display and a 6.4 inch display in the mix. So after all this wait, it turns out Google is continuing to work with OEMs, or original equipment manufacturers, to continue to make these Google Play Edition devices with the pure, almost Nexus-like experience and the really fast software updates. But the question is, why? Why does Google keep doing this? And why do OEMs keep working with Google to do this? Wouldn't these be seen as competition to the non-Google Play Edition versions of these phones? If I was Samsung and I was spending my millions and millions of dollars on marketing and advertising for my new Galaxy S4, what sort of incentive would I ever have to work on the side project with Google on an alternate edition to sell in a different store? Wouldn't that sort of compete with the sales of our original goal? Well, the truth is the Google Play Edition doesn't sell like at all. It has very, very low sales numbers. And as proof of that, how many iPhones do you see in the wild? How many regular Galaxy S4s do you see in the wild? And then how many Google Play Edition devices do you see people using out there? Probably almost zero, if not none at all. And on top of that, Google Play editions get zero advertising. You have not and likely never will see an advertisement for a Google Play Edition device from Google or from any of the OEMs who are busy selling their standard editions. And so it's become very clear that Google just does not care about the sales numbers of Google Play Edition devices. They're not supposed to sell millions. Instead, consider that the Google Play Edition might actually be strangely named. A better name might be a the premium developer edition, because these devices are perfect for developers. They come with the latest version of Android and get updated very quickly so you can develop on the latest that Google has to offer. And they ship with unlocked bootloaders, which to put simply is way more developer friendly. Fragmentation is a word that's thrown around a lot. And in a couple of cases, an Android app that's developed on and tested for one Android phone will literally not work with another Android phone, whether that's because of a difference in screen size or resolution or SOC or graphics or any combination of those things. So there's a chance, a very small chance that giving developers more hardware options to develop on will make it easier to develop for more hardware options. Uh, there's, a, there's a chance that a developer with a Google Play Edition LG G-Pad 8.3 will develop his app to work perfectly on that hardware, the 8.3 inch display, the 1080p resolution, the Snapdragon 600 SoC, the Adreno 320 GPU, all that stuff. In theory, this would translate to a tiny advantage for LG because now there's a couple more apps in the Play Store that are going to work perfectly with the LG G-Pad 8.3, or at least be well compatible, but that's just a theory. Basically, don't read too much into the last part. Essentially, it's only two more Google Play Edition devices. It's not a huge deal, but just the fact that there are any more Google Play Edition devices means that Google hasn't forgotten about it, and that Google still thinks that this is the right way to keep developers happy, and that this is a good thing to continue to do, to work with these OEMs and make these devices. And it also happens to have the great upside that geeks like me, and possibly you, love using them. So that is the Google Play Edition devices explained. But honestly, in a dream world, we have every device as a Google Play Edition, right? What would you want to see as a Google Play Edition phone or tablet? Now, there's a more realistic and then less realistic choices. I think more realistic and desirable would be a Google Play Edition LG G2, maybe a Google Play Edition Galaxy Note 3. That would be nice. Uh, but then there's, of course, the far-fetched, no reason to ever happen, Google Play Edition Lumia 1020, Google Play Edition iPhone, iPad, whatever. Let me know what you guys would love to have a Google Play Edition of 
in the comment section below. Bonus points if you tell me how many times I said Google Play Edition in this video. It's probably a lot. Either way, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you wanna hit that thumbs up button below, that would be awesome. But more importantly, there's a subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this on a regular basis. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.